Hello, I'm Gary Siegel, a sales engineer at White Source Software. In this video, I'm going to show you how our Jira integration enables developers to manage open source risk directly within Jira workflows. The Jira integration is powered by White Source's policy engine. Let me show you how we can set up a policy to create Jira issues for high severity vulnerabilities. We do this by clicking on the Add Policy button. The first thing we do is give the policy a name. Then we select the match type of by security vulnerability severity. Then we select the severity of the vulnerabilities we want to trigger issues in Jira. In this case, we'll leave it at the default setting of high severity. On the action pane, we'll select issue and then select Issue Tracker Plugin. As a note, don't use the deprecated issue trackers. In addition, if we'd like Unified Agent Scans to fail if this policy is triggered, check this box. We then add the policy and click Save. Of course, you can create as many policies as needed. For example, you can add policies for licenses, old libraries, libraries with effective vulnerabilities, and more. And that's all we need to do in WhiteSource to create issues in Jira. Now, let's take a look at Jira and see how things look as a result of the policy we created in WhiteSource. Here we can see the issues created in my project as a direct result of the high severity vulnerability policy. Let's take a look at one in closer detail. Opening it up, we can see the library with high severity vulnerabilities, the White Source organization, product, and project, the library path from the scanner, the full dependency tree, and of course, all of the high severity vulnerabilities associated with this library. This information enables developers to quickly address the issue. Switching back to white source, I've pulled up the list of vulnerabilities for the library we were just looking at. Here we see each vulnerability and see that they're in an active status. But I want to show you what happens if we decide these vulnerabilities don't apply to our project. In Jira, we would change the status of the issue to done. Once I do this, the vulnerability alerts are ignored in white source. I'll reapply the filter and you can see that the vulnerabilities are now ignored. This will remove them from risk calculations and reports on active vulnerabilities. As you can see, the two-way integration allows developers to manage risk from within Jira and not have to log in to white source. Now I'm going to show you how to install the white source integration into your Jira in instance. We'll start in white source on the admin page. If you don't have access to the admin page, please contact your organization's white source administrator for this step. From the admin page, Click on Issue Tracker Settings, then go to the Issue Tracker box on the bottom of the page and click Generate Activation Key. I'll copy it to the clipboard for now, but you can come back later and copy it again. In Jira, we'll need to have a project or projects set up to receive issues from white source. The most important thing to know when creating a project in Jira is to make sure you use the company managed project type. This is required for the white source Jira integration. Now that we've created projects in Jira to receive white source issues, let's add the white source application to our Jira instance. We do this by visiting the Jira marketplace, searching for white source, and adding it.
Once WhiteSource is installed, we'll activate it by using the Apps menu. The first thing we'll do is enter the activation key we saved earlier. If needed, you can always go back to WhiteSource and copy it again. Once activated, we're now ready to configure the integration. The last step is to create mappings to connect WhiteSource products and projects to JIRA projects. First, we select the WhiteSource product we want to map. I'll use my demo product. Then we can select one, some, or all white source projects we want to map. I'll select all for this demo. The next thing we do is select which type of white source policies we want to map. Since we just created a vulnerability severity policy, let's be sure to map it. Note we can do multiple policy match types. For example, if we later add a policy to flag certain licenses, we can add that as well. We'll finish the, the mapping by identifying which JIRA project will receive these issues. In this case, I'll use my demo project. Click Add, and this mapping is done. More mappings can be added if additional granularity is needed. If a policy is triggered that doesn't match one of the mappings, the integration will send the issues to the default JIRA project. You'll need to select this project here. Be sure to click Save after selecting it. The last step in the configuration is to visit the advanced settings. If you'd like the integration to ignore risk in white source when a JIRA issue is moved to the done state, set this switch. If left in the default off setting, White source risk will not be updated when JIRA issues are marked done. Once these easy configuration steps are completed, you'll start receiving JIRA issues from white source policy matches. For complete details, please refer to the white source documentation for the JIRA integration. The link is provided in the video description. Thank you for watching this demonstration. For additional information, please contact your WhiteSource representative or visit our website at whitesourcesoftware.com.